Hello, Marcus Giuliano here, international business author, speaker, uh, Forbes Business Council member, and restaurateur. Uh, I'm gonna talk marketing today. Most of you know that I'm a marketing maniac. I love marketing. I give marketing a lot of credit to my business. Besides good food and, and this and that and good service, marketing is essential uh, to any business because you can get out marketed very easily with a better product than your competitor. Nowadays, it's where people's eyes are. They, they, they see things uh, between video marketing, YouTube posts, um, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, uh, all these things, Facebook. People are constantly getting bombarded with messages and people will go where their mind is on or where their mind remembers. And if somebody's bombarding them who has lesser of a product uh, with messages and with offers, chances are, that person might win the game of revenue. So don't let that happen to you. We're gonna to talk today, I'm gonna to talk today about uh, a brilliant example of content marketing, like brilliant. I mean, like I read this and I was like, wow. So one of the Forbes contributors, uh, Mark, um, Michael, Michael Maven, Michael Maven, uh, I read his article the other day and it was called Three Examples of Clever Content Marketing uh, that built entire businesses and this is this this is just amazing, and I really want to share this with you because content marketing rules. Gary Vaynerchuk says Mark, content marketing is is the way of marketing. That's how you market a business with content. And he did his wine library TV. He did a thousand episodes. Never got on TV on on camera and said, "Here's the bottle of wine that I want you to buy, and here it is, and this is how much it is." He would basically say, "This wine tastes good. This wine tastes bad. This or that," and be funny, be himself, be personal, um, have a chalkboard, have his jet spit bucket, and just just be there and he said he said he really could have sold wine if he did um wine.com link and did an affiliate program he said no doubt i could have made a lot of money selling wine it was, it was never about selling wine it's about creating good quality content and just getting the content up there so content marketing has been practiced for a hundred years 100 plus years it's nothing new so i have a youtube channel that has seventy thousand views of uh, uh so seventy thousand subscribers 15 million views and it's all content I've never gone in there once and said, come to my restaurant on this day because I'm doing this promotion and this is, I just talk about stuff we have. I talk about empowering people's lives, about them making better choices in food and using other people's content. So don't think you have to create your own content only to do content marketing. You can curate other people's content and then add your own notes. Even like if you look at Dr. Mercola's um, email that goes out. He'll take articles from other places. Uh, the Health Ranger, Mike Adams, he'll take articles from other places and he'll just summarize it and then give credit or even list the article where it's from. And they're just taking other people's content because really you can go online and get tons of resources. You go to Google Alerts, Google Alerts, put your topic in. Like for example, for me, I want to educate people on olive oil. So I put a Google Alert for olive oil and every time olive oil comes up in the news, I get an email with the articles and I can sort through the articles and say, this article here is perfect on picking high quality olive oil. Let me distribute that to my guests now. And you can pick salt, you can pick whatever, uh, best wineries in the US, whatever you wanna do for your restaurant or business, you can get content and just start redistributing and adding your personal touch on it. So I wanna talk about one of the things that Michael Maven talks about, three that, that were really fantastic. Uh, marketing, content marketing ideas that really literally built these, these entire businesses. And the one, the restaurant industry can totally relate to this. And that's the Michelin Guide. 1900, they started the Michelin Guide. And the Michelin Guide, the Michelin Tire Company started a guide not for tires, but for restaurants. They started a guide for the best restaurants on the French countryside. So people could go out and explore the countryside and drive on their Michelin tires and just get that brand awareness of that Michelin logo and the guy on the cover um, and you now pick this guide and this guide's always with you because you wanna go find the best restaurants. Until the mid 90s, uh, late 90s, I used the Michelin Guide a lot, especially traveling here in the US, the Green Guide. Traveling in Europe, the Red Guide for restaurants and the Green Guide for attractions, we use those heavily. And I've actually bought Michelin tires for my cars in the past and every time I bought a Michelin tire, I felt good, I had a great feeling knowing that there was a connection between me using their content marketing guide, not really realizing that it was content marketing at the time, I was young and I didn't know the correlation in my early 20s with that. But however, I was on, their Michelin was on my mind because I always had copies of the Michelin guide. I'd walk into Barnes and Noble or Borders back then and I was like, let me get the new Michelin guide, it's coming out and when you go to get tires, well yeah, do you have Michelin? Brilliant, brilliant marketing. So again, 
they're creating, they weren't really creating original content. They were just curating all the best restaurants. And then they'd have inspectors that went out and inspected restaurants and give out awards. And the prestigious awards would make or break a chef. If you got a Michelin star, one star, you were like, wow, you were on top of it. Two stars, insanely good. Three stars, the best in France and the best in the world when they started going worldwide. So, I mean, when I worked in a Michelin three star in 1997, there were only 24, 25 Michelin three stars worldwide in the countries that they were rating. And that's it. There were only 24, 25. So I was literally working at one of the best restaurants in the world at the time, one of the top 25. And for me, that was great. So I found a job with Michelin. Um, I used it for ideas because there was a lot of ideas in there because each restaurant that got rated got to put their signature dish in there. So I would go, hey, what's this famous French chef doing in London or or France or wherever in Germany? I'd open the book in Italy. I'd go there and say, wow, this is their signature dish of this restaurant. That was really cool. This is before we could just go online. You could go online in the 90s, but it wasn't something popular and every restaurant didn't have a website then like it does now. So. I was using them to get jobs, I was using them for ideas, and I was using them to buy tires all through that guide because I had a great feeling. So what can you do in your business, whether it's a restaurant or whatever type of business you have to create content? Now in my restaurant, I help people eat better. So literally I distribute content about olive oil, uh, wild salmon versus farm salmon, the best salt out there. And because I talked about the best salt, in my opinion, what I believe is the best salt, Good Morning America actually picked that piece up and I was actually on Good Morning America talking about salt. So I had nationwide coverage on Good Morning America because I was distributing content marketing. Um, Authority Magazine, uh, all these things. Dr. Oz, I was just showing content on baking soda and acid reflux and how baking soda can be part of a healthy regime. And that got picked up by Dr. Oz. So it was actually on the Dr. Oz show. And this is all from just creating content and living your passion and sharing things intimately and passionately with people of, uh, uh, about your business. And this is just what happens as a side effect. And again, YouTube, 15 million views, 70,000 subscribers currently, and I just love what I'm doing. So go ahead and create content, put it out there. If you're a restaurant, creating a recipe book is one of the easiest ways to share content. If you don't like to share your recipes, get over it. Share your recipes. Um, somebody shared that recipe with you and the average person at home is not gonna recreate your recipe and another restaurant's not gonna steal your stuff and just have the confidence and just put the recipes out. A book like this, 60 pages, six by nine, costs a couple bucks to print through CreateSpace. You publish it yourself. Um, you pay somebody to edit it a few hundred bucks or you trade them in gift, gift cards, gift certificates to your restaurant and you put up recipes and if you really want to pay for the book up front, you can actually do cooking classes. And if you have 30 recipes or 50 recipes, you can do cooking classes. Let's say 30, let's break it down to 30. You do three recipes, you do a cooking, 10 cooking classes, and you put the recipes to test where your people are paying you for you to teach them how to cook. And they're actually testing the recipes right then and there so you can figure out if the recipe actually works and if people can actually follow the recipe. It's a great way. So get over not sharing recipes. The best chefs in the world have cookbooks and it's their form of content marketing. Whether, you know, it's, it's Jacques Pepin or whoever these guys are, they write books, Gordon Ramsay, they write books and they share content. And that's how you build a brand and that's how you build a business, content marketing. So what are you doing for your business uh, for content marketing? Would love to know if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, leave some comments uh, if on, on Facebook, leave some comments and, um, yeah, content, content marketing rocks. Hey, Marcus Giuliano here. Uh, so if you like the content that I'm providing in this video, uh, you can get my book, 50 Mistakes That Business Owners Make for free. Uh, follow the link below in the description of the video and there's a link to get this book for free. I will ship it to you. Um, you just pay the shipping. I've got the books already here. They're already paid for. 50 Mistakes That Business Owners Make. 15 years plus of me documenting uh, my mistakes and how I corrected them and how I mastermind with some of these mistakes and how I learn from others and what I've teach my coaching clients. And again, this book is totally free. So take advantage of it uh, while supplies last.